A Senate committee explores school safety, the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights offers recommendations, and two bills are introduced to help students prepare for and complete college. Hi, I'm Philip Lovell, and I'm joined by Anne Heislip. Let's begin with school safety. Anne? Thanks, Philip. Last week, the Senate Committee on Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs held a hearing on school safety. Before the hearing, Deb Delisle, president and CEO of All for Ed, submitted a letter to the committee recommending a broad approach to defining school safety, rather than an exclusive focus on gun violence. Deb's letter stated, quote, School safety is about more than preventing shootings. It also encompasses issues such as student voice, educational support personnel, school discipline practices, positive social and emotional learning, and student privacy, end quote. Each, each witness at the hearing contended the federal government could do more to improve school safety, including witnesses representing victims of the shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. One of those witnesses was Max Schachter, the father of a student killed at Parkland and founder and CEO of Safe Schools for Alex. He urged greater transparency and data regarding school safety. Here's a clip. On college campuses, the Federal Clery Act imposes financial penalties for inaccurate reporting of, co of campus crime statistics. But in K through 12, there is no such requirement. The result is that when you go online to look at school ratings, many of them, including Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, have an A rating. Academics are important, but if the children do not come home to their families and staff don't come home, nothing else matters. That A rating that Marjorie Stoneman Douglas has has nothing to do with safety of that institution. There's no school safety rating system currently to inform parents and teachers of whether or not that's their school has implemented the best practices to prevent and mitigate the number of casualties during the next school attack. Schools should not be able to get an A rating like Marjorie Stoneman Douglas did if they never held a code red drill for the entire school year. Also last week, the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights released a report that urged the Trump administration to issue new school discipline guidance to states and districts. The report found that students of color and students with disabilities are disproportionately disciplined in school. It also found that 1.6 million students attend a school with a sworn law enforcement officer, but not a school counselor. In 2014, the Obama administration issued guidance to address disparities in school discipline, but the Trump administration rescinded the guidance, citing that it posed a threat to school safety. Scrapping the guidance was a recommendation of the Federal Commission on School Safety, which was created after the February 2018 school shooting in Parkland, Florida. The U.S. Commission on Civil Rights, however, argues that the Education Department should continue to offer guidance to states and districts on how to ensure their school dis discipline policies respect students' civil rights. Back on Capitol Hill, earlier this month, Representative Joaquin Castro from Texas introduced the Hispanic Educational Resources and Empowerment, or HERE, Act. It authorizes a $150 million grant program to support collaboration between Hispanic serving institutions, or HSIs, and Hispanic serving school districts to improve college readiness for Hispanic youth. To be eligible for a grant, institutions and districts must have at least 25% Hispanic enrollment. Based on this criteria, there are currently 523 HSIs and 3,343 school districts that could gain access to these funds. Focusing on these institutions and school districts is critical, given large achievement gaps in high school and college attainment for Hispanic students. Also, Representative Andy Levin from Michigan and Senator Tammy Baldwin from Wisconsin introduced the America's College Promise Act to improve college affordability and increase degree attainment. It creates a new partnership between the federal government and states and Indian tribes to provide two years of tuition-free enrollment in community or technical college programs that lead to a degree or industry-recognized credential. To access these new federal funds, states would need to align their high school graduation requirements with entrance requirements for credit-bearing coursework in community college. States would also need to ensure their programs offer academic credits that are fully transferable to four-year institutions in the state. Finally, the bill establishes a new grant program to help minority-serving institutions cover a significant portion of tuition and fees for the first two years of attendance for students from low-income families. That's all for today. For an email alert when the next Federal Flash is available, email us at alliance at allfored.org. Thanks for watching.
Federal Flash is the Alliance for Excellent Education's video series on important developments in education policy in Washington, D.C.